Good afternoon. Uh, it's a real pleasure to be here. So thank you, uh, Senator Grafstein and, and Rafi, for having me here. Uh, today I, I wanted to talk a little bit about the state of the venture industry you know, as someone who is uh, very close to the venture capital industry in a, in a different way, and I'll explain how Landmark functions uh, more specifically. But you know, we are in a time when it's, uh, there's a lot of challenges, but there's a lot of interesting dynamics and themes that I think it's important to understand of how we work our way through this and, and how we as, you can hear me? Sorry, how we as Landmark can uh, do our part to support. So I think uh, Senator Grassi covered my background sufficiently, but basically uh, as Landmark, what we do is provide a, uh, uh, an inner, inner ground between emerging growth companies, venture capitalists, uh, private equity firms, and Fortune 1000 corporations. And so we do it in two ways, really. It's venture development, which is supporting the growth of companies, uh, and then from an investment banking standpoint, supporting those companies uh, raise capital, do mergers and acquisitions, uh, and also from our own balance sheet, we uh, participate and have a por portfolio of companies that we support with those services as well. So I can get into more details later. The, you know, the world has changed, uh, you know, I think, one of the things in this room I'd be interested to hear is a kind of investors in the room, now how many of you have uh, made an investment in the last six months or are looking to make an investment in the last, the last six months? Let me show hands in the room of investors. So I think that's a testament to, to where we are. You know, I think uh, some pithy things here. You know, where are we? we we've got uh, the, the venture model, which was the poster child for success of Santo Road, which is really also facing challenges. Uh, we've got a, a dynamic of investors who are not sure what their business models are, uh, and we've got a, a, a capital structure where there is capital, but it's just not being deployed in the right ways. Um, so looking more deeply at the specifics in a few charts here, so now you can't see the, the, the numbers, but you know, capital investing inside Canada, both domestically and abroad, is obviously going down. Uh, you know, last year was, was a very disappointing year, and I think these numbers are still going down. Um, the reality is China, India, Brazil are areas that are capturing the attention of investors, and uh, there are foreign funds being created and funds in those places being created to, to fund. And, and it's, the reality is that even U.S. venture firms are coming to Canadian uh, pensions, other people pitching them to do investments outside of Canada, which seems a little strange in terms of how, you, how this uh, should be promoted. Um, and the reality is Canada is a very healthy economy. The, the recession really didn't impact the banking system, um, but the capital is still not being deployed to entrepreneurs in a way that fosters innovation. Uh, and so I think I want to talk a little bit about that. You know, given the dynamic of Israel in this room, uh, you know, it's not that dissimilar. This is, a, this is the poster child for innovation, and there's been huge successes of venture capitalists uh, creating companies uh, leveraging the, the Office of the Chief Scientist to, to fund that through R&D, going public, getting sold. But last year, the market was down 50% in terms of invested dollars. That's, that's pretty staggering. Uh, it's a little bit better in Q2 and Q3, but the reality is you have about 70 venture funds in Israel. 15 of them are you know, global firms that have local presence, uh, and that number is reducing. Uh, certainly, the number of Canadian venture capital firms is also reducing. And so, uh, you know, why is that? What can we do? Um, Part of it is fundraising, and part of this is the capital deployed into the venture capital world has become, you know, the, the risk aversion related to it is creating issues for how this industry works. Uh, the returns are, have been very poor over the last 10 years. Uh, the capitalists are changing the way they think about uh, investing earlier stage, late stage growth capital, um, and so there needs to be a fundamental shift of how you're allocating money and who is, is doing the investing in these companies. And this is an indication of the U.S. funds, which is uh, really flatlined. I think this is much worth, uh, worse in other areas. Uh, certainly in Israel and Canada, these numbers are even, even worse. So what the result is is a shrinking of the industry, a reduced number of firms, a, re a smaller size of the capital uh, and, the, and the funds being deployed, which is changing the entire dynamics of how venture capitalist works. Um, so, what are VCs doing today? They, they are focused on capital efficiency. So they need to see that you're going to be cash flow positive in 12 months, 18 months, which is a very 
challenging endeavor when you're, you're trying to create a huge platform of success in a technology industry. Um, they're managing their own portfolios. They're, they're, there's uh, mid-stage companies that uh, a lot of the investors around the table don't have capital to invest, so there's a lot of triage going on, and that's taking a lot of their attention these days, and so new deal flow is being hampered. They are essentially creating this chasm of, of, of risk around a risk profile. Um, you know, the, the idea that this is a smaller industry means there are fewer firms investing in a lot of ideas, uh, and there's going to have to be a, a different way to participate in the upside, and I'll, I'll talk about that in a little bit. It's just a new dynamic in terms of how the models are working. The other thing is that a lot of companies are seeing this as an opportunity. You have strategic investors that are sitting on a lot of cash. They've weathered the storm, uh, and they have you know, found an, an opportunity to go back into the investing side for innovation. They've cut their budgets on R&D, they've uh, kind of focused on the bottom line and profitability, and now they have an opportunity to see a low valuation environment with startups as a way to invest. And so we're seeing a lot of clients come to us that say, let's, you know, let's go tap the strategic investment uh, area, and frankly, there's a lot of activity there. Uh, and then you've got the new areas of funding. So the whole super angel, which is a definition that's pretty amorphous at this point, is what is that? It's essentially former venture capitalists. It's high net worth individuals that are trying to create a new platform for uh, investment that's got some structure and some ecosystem around it. Because uh, as, as we know, the angel world is great, but it's very disorganized, uh, as is the high net worth uh, Avenue. Uh, incubators, there's programs that are, that are very good. They typically um, you know, have a marginal level of success historically, and there's, you know, I think there's some, uh, some real hard look that needs to be done of how do you get these incubator programs to work more effectively. And frankly, I think it's focus, I think it's the ecosystem, it's the networking events, it's creating uh, a forum for entrepreneurs to, to meet the right people, meet the right investors, and I think Mars is, is, a, is on the right, very much on the right track to do that. Uh, and then Growth PE, which is you know, essentially redefining its business model. What is growth PE? Is it earlier stage? Is it these mid-stage? Probably not. Is it later stage? Uh, it's companies that are typically profitable and don't need capital, which doesn't really solve the immediate issue of, of venture capital. So as an entrepreneur, you know, this is what we're hearing a lot of in terms of companies struggle to raise money. You know, I don't want to go to the VCs. You know, their terms are terrible. They're not adding value. You know, I need to find a different avenue for how I'm going to raise my money. You know, the reality is the innovation is continuing, but it's continuing in a way that it's not fostering what we want in terms of job creation, expansion of businesses at a rate that is supporting economic growth, and, and a lot of the marketing programs are the first things to go. So companies are being innovative, but they're, they're doing it on a lower budgets. They're not hiring people. They're making do with less, uh, and that's not a the truly healthy environment in a lot, of, a lot of cases in terms of growth. Um, talked about strategics. It's also high net worth. They, I can't tell you how many people come to me and say, I just get, want to go find a great high net worth investor. I don't want to go to the VCs. Um, and the reality is there, there's a lot of them. They're, they're, it's a very large network of opportunity. It's just not organized. And people have their three or four contacts. And there's a real opportunity to create high net worth networks with the right ecosystem to deploy capital into the venture capital model. Um, and then there's, there's companies that are saying, we're far enough along that you know we can go public, and you know the TSXV is an interesting uh, element that the taste uh, aim had its, had its heyday, and now I think is, is is troubled. But there is a lot of you know is it worth it? Is 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 this the right path for companies to raise capital because it creates a lot of um, issues in the future in terms of costs, in terms of uh, how they can be perceived and how they can raise future capital if they're not successful. So uh, all these are the ways entrepreneurs are reacting to the environment. Um, you know, I talked a little bit about this, but this is a really a reality. If you talk to any venture firm, even private equity firms, um, how are they managing their new funds? You know, it's seed and early stage, or it's very late stage. And, and there's really this, uh, this mid-stage funding gap that is a function of, there are already companies in their portfolio at this stage they're not sure what to do with. Um, there are, is a disorganized uh, family office uh, venture capitalist approach that is very difficult to access, and strategics are kind of debating whether they, they play in this area. So uh, I think this is probably a focus even more than the seed problem, is that you've got companies that are formed, they're funded to a certain point, and they need the next round of funding, and they can't get it. And so you either have M&A that happens too early, you have, which creates you know, a lot of times you know, job loss versus job creation, 
Uh, and you, you need to solve this issue, I think, in, in order to fix the venture capital model in many ways. Uh, and I think it's through different pools of capital and different approaches to, to how things are funded. So how was it? You know, we, 10 years, 15 years ago, when everyone loved the venture capitalist model is, you know, let's go do 10 deals. Two of them, eh, they'll probably go, go to zero. Two of them are going to be great 10x returns. We'll take them public. We'll be, we'll be very happy. Six of them will get our money back. You know, three to five years, IPO, M&A exit, healthy environments. We, you know, able to deploy capital, take enough share in these companies to generate a return. And that worked for a very, very short while. You know, the new reality is you've got these big horizon companies, you know, typically today on the social media and in the, uh, the mobile platform. So, you know, one out of every three to 500,000 companies will be at the Facebook. Uh, and you've got, you know, many, many, many companies that are failures and just don't reach that level or are acquired very early. So companies cost less to start. They cost less to become revenue generating and profit generating. Um, you know, open source and cloud computing and all these things are enabling companies to actually be innovative and not require $40 million, of, $40 million of capital to get to the point where they have a product and they have customers and they have revenue, which is a good thing. It also changes the model. And so, uh, you know, Canada has been great at semiconductors and hardware and communications, you know, infrastructure. And the reality is a lot of the shift has gone from infrastructure to the soft tech, the, you know, the delivery platforms, the mobile platforms, the monetization platforms, um, virtualization, where you can create business models profitably and, and provide a service or a, a solution to companies on a much lower capital base. And I think that is the focus of where VC uh, successful venture capitalists are, are spending their time today. Um, you know, smaller funds, smaller deals, the reality is you've got to have a business model that supports that, uh, and you have to have returns based on that investing strategy. Uh, and so that's, that's the forcing of rationalization, consolidation in the industry, and, and a different approach to the time frames and the horizon, the types of deals that are being invested in.